In the first part of this course, I'm going to show you how to set up an empty Flutter project. And also I'm going to install all of the Firebase dependencies we need. And I'm going to show you how to set up the Firebase project and to connect it to your app. So for this course, I'm going to be using Android Studio. If you want to use anything else like Visual Studio Code or any other IDE, you're free to do so. But if you are using Android Studio, well, you will need a couple of extensions. So you can go here when you open Android Studio for the first time, you'll get this screen. And then you can go into Configure and go into Plugins. And you're going to need the Flutter plugin. So you can just go here to the Marketplace, type in Flutter. And since I already have it installed, I don't get the option to install it again. But you can install it. You pretty much need it to work with Flutter in Android Studio. And when you install the Flutter package, it's also going to bring in the Dart package, which is just the programming language Flutter works with. So I'm now going to create a new Flutter project and we get a couple of options. It's a Flutter app, Flutter module, plugin or a package. So since we're making an app, we're just going to go with the Flutter app with the basic with the basic template that they provide. So we can now go into next and you can call this project whatever you want. I'm just going to call it restaurant reviews because that's what we're building. And I'm going to put it in a path. You can add a description. One thing you should put at the start of your project is the organization. This is pretty much uh, your domain name. If you have a domain name, for example, I have programmingaddict.com. It should be that domain name, but reversed because that's going to be your application ID on Android and the bundle package ID on iOS and also your package names in your Android and iOS projects. This is important if you want to distribute these apps on app stores, on the app store and the Google Play store. So you should add this if you're ever planning on distributing this. You can also add this later. But if you know you're going to be publishing this to the stores, it's best to do it at the start. But if you're not, you can just skip this step. But I'm going to say com.programmingaddict.com, actually not .com. And yeah, just com.programmingaddict. And now on the Android and iOS language side of things, you can choose whichever one you want here. But if you're going to be writing some native code, you probably know what is the best language to pick. But, and also Kotlin and Swift are the latest languages. The best thing should be probably to use them. And you can now here check uh, where is your Flutter app going to be running on. I'm not going to check Flutter web for now because that's not what this project is about. And I'm going to say finish. It says invalid module name, restaurant reviews record. Okay. I'm just going to then go and create a new folder inside of that folder, call it restaurant reviews and extend this path by that. And that should be okay. I'm now going to say finish. And now we have an empty Flutter project. I'm just going to now remove all of this boilerplate generated by the file new project. I'm going to rename this to app. I'm going to make a new stateless widget called home and I'm just going to return an empty container for now. Okay, so now I'm on the pub.dev website, which has all of the packages for Dart and Flutter. And I'm going to go and install all of the Flutter, all of the Firebase packages one by one. Okay, so the first package I'm going to install is Firebase Core, which is just the main Firebase plugin, which enables you to connect to, to your Firebase account. So I'm going to just copy here whatever code I need. I'm going to go back to Android Studio and go into pubspec.yaml. And here under the dependencies section, I'm going to paste in what I copied from pub.dev and save the file. And now if you're using Visual Studio Code, for example, Immediately when you save the file, all of the dependencies and the libraries you use are going to be pulled. But in Android Studio, you're going to have to do it manually by clicking on pop get. Or if you're using something else, you probably will have to run that from the command line. 
So here, if I don't run it, for example, and go into another direct file, I'm going to get a warning that says pub spec has been edited so we can get the dependencies. So let's do that. And here we immediately get the output of all the packages we got. And yeah, so we got the Firebase core package. And now let's continue. The next package we need is Cloud Firestore because we're going to use that for our database and for our basically data storage. So I'm going to go into Cloud Firestore, copy the name along with the version, go back into Android Studio, paste it. And I'm not going to do a pub get for every single one of these. I'm just going to paste all of them in and then do it later. So the next package we need is Firebase Authentication, Firebase Auth. And since we're going to be using Firebase also for aut authenticating our users, we're going to need that package as well. Copy the version and the name, paste, save. And we're going to have two external authentication methods that we're going to integrate with Firebase. And the first one of those is Facebook authentication and the second one is Google authentication. So now I'm going to find the Facebook auth package going here. And this doesn't have anything to do with Firebase necessarily. We're just going to have the users log in with Facebook and then we're going to figure out a way to hook that into Firebase authentication because Firebase authentication has support for stuff like Facebook authentication. This just helps us work with the Facebook authentication method. So paste that. And the last dependency we're going to pull is the Google sign-in. Again, going here. And this is even an official package from Flutter.dev. So copy that. Going here. And that's it. Now I'm just going to say get dependencies. And great, we got all of the dependencies. So now I'm going to go into my Firebase account, into my Google account, basically my Firebase account. And I'm going to hook up the Android side of the app with the Firebase project we create. And then in a different video, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing for iOS. Okay, so now I'm in the Firebase console. You can get there by simply going to console.firebase.google.com. And I'm going to say add project. And let's just call the project restaurant reviews. And I'm just going to put video on here because I'm doing this for a video. Then we can say continue. And now we're offered some options like enabling Google Analytics, which you can do for sure. And yeah, it enables stuff like A-B testing. It allows for crash analytics, which we're not going to go into right now. So yeah, that's pretty neat. So let's just enable Google Analytics and say continue. Okay, so now we have to set up a Google Analytics account. Uh, I'm going to use this one. You probably will get only one because I have this Google Cloud account for a minute now and just say create project. Now this may take a minute or two to create. And after a minute, the project is created. So now we can go in and say continue. Okay, now we can get started by adding Firebase to our app. So here, let's just say Android. And now this is the Android package name thing, the Android application ID. That's the thing, if you remember when I mentioned previously the one for, uh, what was it? Yeah, it was the organization that Android Studio asked me to use. So now I'm going to go into Android Studio and just copy paste the application ID. So to get your application ID, you're going to go in the Android folder. And now we have the app folder. And in the app folder, there is a build.gradle file. Now there's also one on the whole project level, but you need one on the app level. So we're going to go in there and go into the application ID. So since I specified the organization domain, which was programmingaddict.com or com.programmingaddict, it immediately generated this ID for me. But if you want to change this ID, whenever you want, you can change it. The only time you cannot change it is after you deploy it to the Play Stores and stuff. So I'm just going to copy this ID, go here, paste that. We can give the app a nickname, that doesn't matter right now. There's a debug signing certificate, which we are going to add, but in a future video, because we're going to need it for Google sign-in, but for now we don't need it. Now let's just say register app. 
and it gave us this download button. And it's basically showing us the instructions on where to put the JSON file we download. So this is an absolutely required step. So I'm going to download this. Okay, now this file is downloaded directly in my in my root file here, basically. So I'm going to copy this file. Actually, I'm going to cut it and go into the Android folder and in the app folder. So this is exactly where you need to place that, right? Let's see what they said here. So yeah, directly in the app folder on the same level as this build.gradle file. So let's just paste it over there. And that should be okay. Now let's go to next. Okay, now we need to add some dependencies into our Android project. So we're just going to follow these instructions and add this as it's basically written over here. So we have to go into our project level build.gradle file. So that's the first one we saw. That is not this one, but this one. So this build.gradle file, we have to go in and add this Google services dependency. So it's in the build script section and then dependencies. So let's go there. Build script, dependencies, and here we're going to paste the class path. And now we also have to make sure that in both of these places we have the Google Maven repository. By default, you should have it, but check just to be sure. So it's Google, Google, that's great. And now we need to go into the app level build.gradle file and do some stuff there. So uh, it's app level build gradle, project, app module, build.gradle. So let's go here, app, build.gradle. Let me close this window and let's see what we need to do. So first we have to add this Google services line to basically apply the plugin to the app. So let's copy this. And you copy this by clicking on it. It by default copies it. That's a pretty nice feature. So you can go up here and it has all of these apply plugin things. And here you're just going to apply the Google services plugin. And now we just have to add Firebase Analytics and Firebase BOM, whatever that is. So let's copy Firebase BOM, go into our dependencies over here and paste that. And also I'm going to copy the Firebase Analytics. And we should be good over there too. And now let's go into next. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We should have set up our app right now. Okay, so now we need to have some kind of a way to know if we actually managed to set up Firebase correctly. And the one way you can know if you did that or not is just by trying to use authentication or Firestore or whatever it is that you're trying to use. And if it crashes, you know that something is wrong. But I'm just now going to show you how you can actually confirm this very easily. So we installed all of the Firebase dependencies for Flutter. And now I'm just going to use one of those dependencies so it can try to connect to the Firebase servers. And if something goes wrong, we're going to know that something is wrong in the setup stage of everything. Because if you try to use Cloud Firestore, and you maybe write a wrong query and something crashes, that doesn't mean you didn't set up Firebase correctly, that means you wrote a bad query. But now since we're not actually doing anything with Firestore or authentication or whatever, we're just going to use this one simple line of code to check, we're going to know where the problem lies. So I'm going to take this home widget that we made and convert it into a stateful widget. If you're using Android Studio, you can just press Alt Enter, when you're on the line of the declaration of the home widget. And it's going to give you an option to convert it into a stateful widget. But if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can also do the same thing with Alt Enter or Control Dot or whatever it is in Visual Studio Code. And if you're using some other tool, you may have to do this manually. But just let's convert it to a stateful widget. It's a simple thing to do. And now in the stateful widget, I'm going to call the init state method. And then here I'm going to just say Firebase, right? Dot initialize app. And this, if we didn't set up Firebase correctly, should crash our app. But if it did, nothing should happen. So I'm going to go and press a put a breakpoint over here just so we know that this line is being called. And if something goes wrong, 
it should crash. Okay, so now we're going to run the app on the device and see if we actually did something. So I'm just going to say debug, and it's important for you to do debug if you're trying to use these breakpoints and stuff, which right now I am. So let's say debug, and it's going to take a minute, but it should work. Okay, so I got an error when I tried to run this, and this is pretty common because when you add Firebase packages, they're pretty big packages, and when you try to run on Android, you're going to get this error. It's going to say a failure occurred, and it's going to give you a dex archive merger exception, which basically means, okay, error while merging dex archives, the number of method references in a dex file cannot exceed 64k. So this is a pretty common issue when you're building Android apps, especially if you have a lot of dependencies, because by default, all apps on Android are single dex. But if you want to bring in a lot of dependencies and have over 64k methods, you need to manually set your app to be multi-dex. And here they give us a link on how to fix this issue. So now let's open the browser and see what they're trying to tell us. So <laughs> about the 64k reference limit, multi-dex support prior to Android 5.0. So this is what we need. I'm going to go, but we need the Groovy or the Kotlin one. I'm going to copy this one. And this should be in our build.gradle file for the app module. So let's go to Android Studio. Close this window down. Android Studio, app, build.gradle, and bring in the multidex dependency. Seems that the def is recognized as a keyword, so that's good. Okay, now I'm going to go and try to run the app again. Actually, let me see if anything else needs to be done. Uh, configure your app for multidex. Hmm, I see. So if your app is at minimum 21 or higher, which is Android 5.0 or higher, your app is going to be multidex by default. Well, that's okay, but I'm also going to copy and paste this flag and to default config just so we're sure that everything is fine so default config paste it here save and i'm going to run the app again and i believe now it should start up okay now the app is being installed on the device and yeah it started up it's just a black screen because this is a container so that's okay but as you see this line is being called now if i press resume program it shouldn't crash or throw any errors on or anything so i'm just going to say resume and it seems that everything worked so yeah we set up firebase in our project and that's pretty much it in another video i'm going to show you how to do this on mac os as well for your ios app